Warriors, welcome to this video, my friends. Today's the day we handle the habits that anxiety sufferers go through every single day, the conscious habits, the unconscious habits that are creating more of a worryful, anxious person within. We're going to tackle these. We're going to stop them. We're going to replace them. And today's the day where everything changes. Comment below if you can relate to some of these habits. Habit number one that anxiety sufferers go through that they must stop and replace starting today is stop living your life in reaction. Start living your life with a time structure. What do I mean? Usually anxiety sufferers wake up every single morning, they check their symptoms, they dread the day, you know, they put on the mask, their little uh, happy mask, which I did each and every day, trying to smile to everybody. Oh, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Internally, it's like chaos. And we don't want that emotional reactive way of living. What we want is to wake up at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 7 a.m., whatever it is, and say, I'm going to start a journal. I'm going to write down all my negative thoughts that I have in the morning on a piece of paper and therefore I'm going to release it from my system. Release. Or I'm going to go in the shower and I'm going to make sure that I exude this kind of physiology, this posture, this breathing pattern that will create the momentum that will give me what I want, which is good feelings for the day and an identity that I am proud of. Superman, superwoman, that sort of thing. So 9 a.m., 12 noon, 6 p.m., whatever it is, create some habits that you consciously do each and every day during a specific time of the day, okay? So stick to these. Don't just go through emotional reactions, waiting for the right time to do something. No, no, no. Play offense. Take charge of your life and separate, separate the day into three parts, saying in the morning, this is my habit. In the afternoon, this is what I'm going to focus on. In the evening, this is what I'm going to do. All promoting this new person that you're becoming. Habit number two, we must, we must carry around a toolkit during our days that have skill sets in them. Okay. What do I mean by this? What I mean is don't live your life based around uh, reacting to people, reacting to circumstances, reacting to something that happened, reacting to a symptom. We don't want that. What we want is we want a toolkit of skill sets that we can use throughout the day when we begin to uh, get faced with a challenge. So this could be anything from a cognitive skill set, which says, I'm going to change the tone into a funny cartoon character, for instance, every single time a negative thought pops up. That's a skill set. I'm going to work on my continuous breathing, my 414s, four, four seconds in, one second pause, four seconds exhale. This is a skill set. These are the skill sets that you want to bring with you as you're going through your day whether you are neutral or whether you are faced with internal or external challenges, because don't wing it. Don't wing it. Trust me. Okay. We don't want that. We want to have a, you know, things related to the cognitive processes, which means thought restructuring. How are you going to do it? Body. How are you going to exude confidence? How are you going to breathe? How are you going to, what sort of speed are you going to implement throughout the day? Uh, visualization processes, emotional processes. What sort of skill sets do you currently have that you can put in your toolkit for the day that you can bring with you as you're going about your day? This is really important. Number three is start adopting a lighter internal language. The way you speak to yourself and the way you use the words that you use are crushing your ability to overcome these challenges. A lot of people use words related to self-doubt, self-sabotage, things that happen in their lives that they're not grateful for. You know, they beat themselves up over things. It's a constant roller coaster ride internally when it comes to language with anxiety sufferers. So we must begin becoming lighter with our language, softer to ourselves, more gentle using words such as transition, self-love, clarity, learning, 
I'm becoming knowledgeable. Notice that when I say these things to you right now, you're beginning to feel better. This is the sort of language you want to use. You want to give yourself some space, some flexibility to learn and implement things, my friends. So make sure that you begin today, begin speaking to yourself internally as far as more self-love and more gentleness on this journey because you're going to get there. It's a matter of time, but don't rush it. Make sure that you give yourself that space and that self-love to begin implementing this stuff. All right, so language. Number four is anticipate the challenges internally and externally that will arise on this journey. Now, how many times do anxiety sufferers do this? I know I did. I learned something new or I'm implementing a new method and I'm saying, you know what? I'm implementing this thing that should make me feel better, shouldn't it? And I start going, why am I feeling worse than I was before? And I start questioning the technique or the skill set or the method and I say, it didn't work for me, on to the next thing. I want to explain something to you. When you begin to create change, even if that is positive change, and you know things such as meditation, exercising, new diets, uh, CBT, NLP, if you're going through the program, no matter what it is, when you begin to change these things, you must anticipate new feelings, new emotions, new thoughts, new challenges that arise during this phase of the journey. It's not a linear road. It's like this. That's the kind of road it is. It's not this, oh, skill set, CBT, it worked for that guy. Oh, perfect. I'm just going to go straight towards who I want to become. It doesn't work like that. You will be faced with new emotions, new feelings, new challenges internally. And when you change yourself internally, you're going to find that the energy that you exude as far as that electromagnetic energy that you give off through your heart will begin to change your external reality as well. These sort of changes are normal and natural. Go with them. Know that you're on the right journey. Know that you're on the right path and accept them. Accept them and anticipate that they will arise even though you are implementing good things in your life. It's part of the journey. Number five is stop playing the trying game. Start playing the long game. Important. Trying this, trying that, didn't work, didn't work. I'll try that, I'll read that. Oh, did that work? No more. The long game means that the system has an opportunity to um, take in this new information, this new knowledge, and begin to implement it. Like I mentioned in the last, uh, the last law or the last step that I mentioned, there will be challenges. Now, commit three months to something new, whether that's cognitive behavioral therapy or neuro-linguistic programming or hypnosis, or uh, energetic ways of healing, such as Reiki, or Qigong, or whatever it is. Play the long game, my friends. Give yourself time to make these changes. I know it's not easy with anxiety, because we don't want to feel what we're feeling. I get it. I totally get it. But at the same time, when we become jumpy, from one thing to the other, to the other, to the other. Not only does that cause more internal chaos and anxiety, we begin to doubt our abilities as to whether or not this change can actually happen. So play the long game. Don't play the trying game, which is a habit that a lot of anxiety sufferers go through all the time. Number six is understand at a deeper level that Overworry doesn't make things better or doesn't keep you safer. So many people come to me and say, Dennis, if I don't worry, my wife might leave me. If I don't have anxiety, then guess what? I might lose my career or my business might fall apart. You'll notice that a lot of 
people suffering from anxiety and are going through these emotional challenges, they begin to pair things up unconsciously. Oh, look at this. Lavender. Oh, no, no. Lavender? I had lavender uh, a couple of months ago during that panic attack or whatever it may be. And therefore, because I had that panic attack and I was smelling lavender at the same time, I created a pairing between these things and I don't see lavender as being good for me. So it's really important that we understand um, these pairings that we create. And I remember, I'll tell you a quick story here. I remember being in the shower. Okay, I was in the shower and all of a sudden, this was years ago, all of a sudden the water went really, really hot. And I couldn't escape it for like five or six seconds. My body was burning. And in that moment of, oh my God, what is happening? I can't stand this, whatever it is, burning water. I finally got to a place where I got out of the shower. But I remember days after that where I was looking at the wall and being a little bit sensitized by, by the color of that wall. I began looking at the shampoo and questioning whether or not it was good for me. I began to look at the shower and the bathroom as a whole and say, no, 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 this is a dangerous place. I created pairings around one emotionally traumatic experience that I had. And that's what the subconscious mind does, is it takes everything in that environment and it begins to place labels around each and everything that's around person, the, the sounds, the feelings, all the things that you take in through your senses. It begins to group those things together, my friends. So if we can understand this, we can begin to understand things at a deeper level. We can begin to understand ourselves, our anxieties at a deep, deeper level. And we can understand how we create pairings and how we can begin to consciously change those pairings and those neuro associations. So really important that, um, that we understand. Number six is that worry and anxiety do not keep you safer. They do not make you better. Your life is a life filled with joy, fulfillment, empowerment, and clarity. That's your life. That's your divine being. That's your higher self. That's who you actually are. It's not a life around worry or anxiety, no matter how familiar it's been. Number seven is stop following the herd's way of seeing themselves. Start embracing your own energy within. Now you'll notice a lot of people, they begin to attach themselves to other people. The herd's way of, uh, of thinking, the herd's way of behaving, You'll notice that your good friends, your family, your teachers, whatever it is, these are your role models. These are your, your people, your authority figures, your good friends, your acquaintances that you look up to and you say, you know what? Maybe they're right. And you begin to attach yourself to their way of thinking, their way of behaving. You must separate yourself from the herd. You came to this world as a unique being. As a blank slate, I urge you starting today to look deeper within and say, you know what, these thoughts, these anxious thoughts, these beliefs, this identity is not me. It's not who I am. I will no longer be programmed by social media or the media itself or newspapers or the TV or other people. I will no longer do that. I will begin to reframe the way I see everything and question my own thoughts and beliefs. If something does not help you, question it. If a thought or a belief does not help you, it's not serving you for a better way of overall being, question it and begin replacing it, my friends, because following the herd will get you nowhere. I promise you that. Number eight is... Stop spending so much time on things that don't fulfill your spirit. So a lot of anxiety sufferers will spend lots of time on things during the day that don't really make them feel fulfilled, right? And, and I urge you to partake in things that fulfill your spirit. I want you guys starting today to intentionally, intentionally make yourself feel good. Don't wait for someone to give you some positive uh, 
feedback, saying, oh, some compliments. You look great today. I, you know, and then we begin to live in that world where we believe that we can't make ourselves feel good intentionally. We have to get it from other people or from food or from something else or from that new pair of shoes or that new car or that house or whatever it is. And then we begin living our lives that way when in fact, if we can begin to intentionally make ourselves feel good, I could sit here right now in this moment and bust out a power pose, put both of my hands on my hips and go, ah. I automatically begin to feel within a two minute time frame. I begin to feel better about myself. I begin to feel that self-doubt release from my system. And it's been proven through science that 20 to 40% more relaxation if I hold a power pose, a power pose or whatever it may be, something along those lines. So we can intentionally make ourselves feel good, give back to our spirit, fulfill our spirit, and then create that new energy from our heart that exudes throughout our entire body and goes from organ to organ, right? And, and begins to travel. And your heart's message is really, really important. When you begin to feel good, not only do your organs get happier and more healthy, but you also exude that energy towards the outside world. People will pick up on it within your proximity. They will, and you will begin feeling much, much better about yourself. So stop spending so much time on things that don't fulfill your spirit. Start spending time on things that fulfill you, that really give back to you, okay? Number nine is replace the stimulants with water. You know, this was big for me. I replaced the stimulants. I said, no more coffee, done with it. No more alcohol. I'm not gonna rub my face into feel good things as far as stimulants just to get away from my sensations or my thoughts or whatever it is. I'm not gonna do that anymore. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna partake in a lifestyle that serves me for the better and I will, will replace stimulants with water, stimulants with fresh juice. That was huge on my recovery. Number 10 is, and this is huge, Sleep more, meditate less. What do you mean meditate less, Dennis? Isn't meditation good for me? Yes, it is. But anxiety sufferers are very depleted. They're very tired. They're very exhausted. And I urge you to sleep first, meditate second. If you're feeling tired, if you're feeling drowsy, if you're feeling depleted, your body is saying, please, for God's sakes, stop being so conscious. Stop meditating, stop putting your attention on other things, and just sleep. I can't tell you how much a 10-hour sleep helped me on my road to getting my adrenals to a place where they were neutralized, where they were, were replenished, rebooted, and nothing beats a good night's sleep, my friend. So if you have to choose between meditating and sleeping, and you scan your system and say, what does my system want? It wants sleep, so I will give it to my system because I love myself. I love you guys so very much. Remember, you are more than anxiety. Take these habits, stop these habits, replace these habits, my friends, starting today. Comment and please like this video, share it with people that need it, and I'll see you really soon. Remember, you are more than anxiety. Love you. Thank you.